just in case anybody wants to duplicate what I'm going to do here today, I'll just kind of explain uh, the, the setup. As I did in a video a couple of days ago, uh, my O2 sensor, uh, my one wire O2 sensor is screwed into a piece of exhaust pipe. Uh, by the way, I had an old uh, thread chasing tap that I bought at an auto store that has 14 millimeter spark plug threads on one end and 18 millimeter spark plug threads on the other. And uh, I, I drilled this the tap size and then even though it's only a ched, thread, thread chasing tap, I was able to tap the threads in there. So I guess I didn't even need to buy any bungs, which I did, and you know, which you'd have to weld on. So anyway, there's that. Now, uh, I just have the Sun Pro, the power to the Sun Pro uh, air fuel ratio meter is hooked up to this uh, garden tractor battery here, right there, and a switch on it so I can shut it off, which I'll do right now. Uh, it's not reading anything because it's way too lean. I have a uh, uh, high impedance uh, uh, digital VOM hooked up to the sensor. Uh, the output of the sensor and also the green wire which is the sense wire from the Sun Pro gauge hooked up to that. Um, I also have a, a chromalogumel thermocouple reading in degrees centigrade Celsius which is hooked here and uh, with a radiator hose clamp uh, clamped to the back side of the gauge so I can get an idea when the thing is hot enough. And uh, uh, before it even gets to around 300 degrees Celsius uh, the uh, the meter starts reading. Right now uh, I just ran a test and uh, I'm down to about uh, 16 millivolts which if the meter was on uh, wouldn't really show me any uh, uh, reading because it's it's below the uh, reading for the lowest LED. Okay this is uh, May 4th this is uh, my second uh, narrowband oxygen sensor test and I ha have I have the uh, meter the Sun Pro meter hooked up and it's already up to temperature I hope you can see 350 degrees Celsius uh, you can see the VOM hopefully reading uh, various numbers and uh, they do co coincide with the 0.45 volts, uh, you know, w when the yellow light is on the Sun Pro meter. And I have uh, <laughs> a, s a very small propane flame on right now, much lower temperature than I had on the other day. And um, because I don't want to overheat the sensor, I've looked at probably a good dozen or two bench testing videos where they do stuff like this um, and, and they're many interesting uh, so I don't know if I'm adding much to the art except that uh, in most cases uh, people are planning to put their oxygen sensor on into a uh, engine exhaust stream that's already set up with a uh, ECU uh, computer and so on. So I really wanted to know if the Sun Pro gauge would work uh, acceptably without uh, uh, having the ECU hooked up, and it does. Now what I've done different, uh, last video I added propane into the stream with my uh, oxypropane torch to get the, uh, the voltage to go up and down on the meter. Today I've just added, I don't know if you can see it here, but a little aluminum uh, a clip that covers up the, uh, the air holes uh, that let the air into the propane torch. So that's why it's sounding different than it did yesterday. And I've, I've tried to pick a point where we see the gauge in the general, uh, you know, middle range and kind of going back and forth. That's probably about as close as I'm going to be able to get that. Uh, uh, it, because it's very, very sensitive. So if I kind of squeeze my little uh, meter here, we, we go to rich. And, and I don't know if the aluminum springs to, uh, you know, to cover more of the propane up. You know, cutting off more air makes you rich. I'm adjusting my little aluminum piece here. 
trying to come up with kind of in the middle, and you can see that it sort of is, okay? Now I know that the uh, narrow band sensor isn't the thing to use uh, normally. Now there I just went too lean, and so the meter isn't reading, and we can see we're down at 30 some millivolts. So I gotta make a minor change here. But I can do it, I mean that's the point. And I know that Steve Unra, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, uh, says go get a wide band gauge, and I, I may sooner or later, but here's the point. Uh, uh, I don't need a high level of accuracy for uh, of air fuel ratio for my application. I can always get my generator set running and loaded uh, by ear, you know, and get the gas balance and so on for my application, which is wood gas generator. I, uh, I simply want to know if there's any significant change in air fuel ratio before it's too late to do anything about it. So, so that's what I'm really, really after here. Uh, and, and, and I know if I had a wideband sensor, it would be easier to see what's going on within the given range, and, and I, may, I may deal with, with, with that issue later. But for now, I think this is going to work out for me. So just kind of summing up, uh, uh, you can see right now that I am running, you know, kind of back and forth in that band. Uh, that shows you the gauge works without an engine control unit. It's a single uh, sensor. I think this gauge was in about 30 bucks and this was about 16 or 18. So that's what I've got invested in it right now. Uh, the la I mean, there is one other thing that I want to say, and that is that, uh, uh, that this uh, sensor actually reads a negative voltage uh, at some point. Uh, when I get it way, way too lean. I was kind of surprised to see that happen because uh, I didn't know that was one of the possibilities. But apparently when, when it gets very lean, uh, actually leaner than uh, atmospheric air, uh, it can go negative. So that's it.